In this video, we're going to talk more about Google Drive. Google Drive's main use is as a file storage service. It serves as an additional place where you can create and store your files and then access them from anywhere. So for example, if you are working on a file from home, you could take that file, put it on your Google Drive, and then access it anywhere if you want to continue working on it, maybe at work or pretty much anywhere else. Drive also has additional benefits such as collaboration tools and the ability to create Google Docs, Sheets, Forms, and Slides. And we'll touch on those items just a little bit in this presentation. But mostly we're going to talk about getting started and how you can easily upload files to your Google Drive. So your first step is actually accessing your Google Drive, which is just as easy as all the other features. The best way for you to do this would be to go to your Wagner inbox in the upper right hand corner, you'll see your Google Apps grid and click on Drive. This will take you to the drive associated with your account. Here on the left hand side, there's a lot of really important tools to make yourself aware of. First, you have your new button, and this is going to be really important when you're trying to upload files or create folders. If you click on new, you'll see you can create a new folder, upload a file or access docs, sheets, slides and forms. Here under My Drive, you can see all of the files that you have uploaded to your drive and you can easily access them. Under Shared With Me, this is going to house all of the files that are shared with you by colleagues or anyone you may be working with. If you click on Recent, you'll be able to see any documents or items that you've recently accessed. Starred is going to be anything that you may have starred that's extra important that you can access all in one spot. And trash is where you can go to find anything you may have deleted, so if you need to restore it, you can. Here in the center, you're going to have all of the documents that are going to be in your Google Drive. So you can see them in My Drive, or you can also see them in Recent and find anything you may have recently uploaded. In the upper right corner, we have our settings gear, and that is where we can see the settings of our drive. And right now we are in list view, but if we would rather see it in grid view, you could switch that and that would then change all of your items to grid view. I'm gonna switch mine back to list because that's what I prefer, but you can do whatever you are comfortable with. So we're gonna start off really easily here and learn how to upload files inside of your drive. If we click on new and we click on file upload, it's going to bring up the hard drive of our computer and we're going to search for a file that we would like to upload. So I'm going to choose to upload the Moodle 3.4 guide for students and press open. You'll see in the lower right hand corner here, it's going to upload that item and let me know when that item is complete and when I can access it. So if I click on recent, I can see where my file has gone. So at 408 today, I've uploaded the Moodle 3.4 guide for students. Now I can tell what kind of file it is by looking to the left hand side and this is a Word document. It's also in the title here but on the left the icon will tell me what that kind of file is. Now you'll notice a difference between let's say this one below it which says Google Drive webinar. This is your Word document file but this is going to be a Google Doc file. That means that I have come into my Google Drive and created the document directly inside of my drive. It hasn't been uploaded. This is showing me that I have uploaded this file from another place and brought it onto my Google Drive. So it's just important to recognize what the difference of those two are. Now, if we want to take a look at our guide and we click into the file that we just uploaded, you'll see that it takes us right inside of it and automatically converts it into a Google Doc, which means now we can edit this document if we prefer. So we can now go and look at this. You'll see the title of this document is the title of whatever we have uh, named it and it'll put it automatically up there for us. But if we were starting a brand new Google Doc, we, can, we wanna make sure that we give that a title and we'll talk about that in a little while. Now we can make changes to this document if we want and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just highlight a few things. Maybe I wanna make this a little bit bigger. Maybe I wanna underline it or maybe I wanna change the color of it. I can also decide if I want to, I'm just going to make a few changes here so you could see that there is a difference when we see what changes were made. Now keep in mind, we can work on this document on our Google Drive, but the original document that is saved to your computer will stay the exact same. So if you were to click on the 
Word document, this specific Word document off of Google Drive, the one that's saved to your computer, it's going to look exactly the way it looked when you first uploaded it to Google Drive. If you wanted to make changes to this document on Google Drive and then have that be your new document, you can easily download this off of here onto your computer as a Word document and then that will then be your new file. But just keep in mind that it does not live update the original file. So we've made some changes to this document. We can also change the title if we want, but I'm just going to leave mine the way that it is. Maybe I'll highlight this and change it to one more color just so you can see the difference. And then if I X out of this document and I wait a second for it to update, I should be able to go and click inside of the document and see that it has changed to the changes that I made for that. So now all my colors are there and the document has changed from what it originally was to what it is now. Now we'll talk a little bit more about little changes that you can make and ways that you can download those files later. But for right now, what I'd like to do after showing you how to upload files is how you can create folders to keep yourself more organized. Now, just to make sure that you do know, I use the example of a Word document, but you can also use that same process to upload a PowerPoint presentation, a PDF document, any other kinds of files that you have. You can use that same process of clicking on new and file upload to bring those files onto your Google Drive. And I also only selected one file, but if I had four or five files that I wanted to pull onto my drive, I could highlight all of them and it would upload them. So now if you're anything like me, you like to be organized on your Google Drive. And if you're just starting to use Google Drive, maybe yours does not look cluttered because there's not that many items that are there. But once you start using it more and more, using folders and subfolders would be great for you to use. So that way you keep yourself organized and you know where to find everything. So to create a folder, it's very easy. We're gonna go right up to our new button again, and it's going to be the very first option here under folder. And we're just going to create one that says school documents 2021 and press create. So we've created our folder here and we're going to talk a little bit more later about how you can change colors and do things like that. But right now we're really just focused on creating the folder and adding items into that folder. Now there's a few ways that you can do this. You can add your folder and add your items into here by just dragging and dropping that file directly into here. So maybe we wanted to add our guide for students. We could just drag and drop that item directly into that folder. And if we were to click inside of that folder, we would then find it inside of there. We can also go directly inside of the folder and upload files this way as well. Now I clicked into school documents 2021. And if I wanted to add a file in here, I could simply click on new, choose file upload. And it's the same process as we did before. And we could choose, let's say maybe this cow picture that we have and upload that directly inside of this folder itself. And the last way that we can do it is let's say we're here inside of our drive and let's see if we have any pictures here. If not, I'm going to just upload another one just in case so we have something to work with. And I uploaded this photo here. What we can do is we can right click on our item. Now the right click menu on Google Drive is going to be really important to be aware of because most of the things that you can do on Drive can be accessed from this right click menu. And in this case, that's exactly the case because what we want to do is click on move to and now we can choose where we want to move it to. So if we want to click on School Documents 2021, click on the arrow here, we can move that file here that way as well. So those are a few ways that you can move documents here and there. And it really depends on what you're most comfortable with, but whatever you'd like to do works. So if we click inside of that, we now have three files inside of this folder. And we can also move those files out of here if we didn't want to if we didn't want them in here anymore. So if I wanted to move, let's say this one out of this folder, I could just drag and drop it over to my drive or I can choose move to like I did before and move it back to my drive. So you can move back and forth between files very easily that way. Now you might find that you have all of these files in here, but maybe you'd like to create subfolders to organize it even more. And in order for you to do that, you wanna make sure you're in the folder itself first, which you are, and you're going to click on new folder and that's going to create a folder inside of a folder. So let's just create three, we'll just do history, math, and English. So I'm gonna create one folder named history, one named math, 
press create and then press new folder and we'll do uh, English and press create there. So now we've created three subfolders inside of this folder and we could just use the same process to move those items inside of their subfolders. So I like the drag and drop method. So I could just drag and drop those files directly inside of my folders and I can find them that way. So this one's giving me a little bit of trouble, but that's okay. And that one should now be inside of there. So you can see how it's really easy to not only create folders, but to create subfolders and to make changes to those folders. In regard to changes, some things that you can do is you can color code your folders if you wish. So if I wanted to change the color, once again, I'm going to access that right click menu here and I'm going to change the color to anything I like. So if I want to do one for red, I can do the same thing, change color to purple and same thing for English. Let's change that color to yellow. We have three different colors here and I can also go click on the little arrow here and you can see all of your folders that are inside of your drive. If I wanted to change the color to the school documents 2021, I can also right click on that as well and I can change the color as well. So if I decided that I wanted to rename any of these folders, it's really easy to do that as well. I can just right click on that folder and I can choose rename and we can choose to name it whatever we want. So if I wanted to do math 2021, that would then allow me to rename that folder. Now, if you wanted to delete a folder, you can simply just go ahead and drag and drop that folder directly into your into your trash and it'll say math 2020 will be deleted forever move to trash and that will then delete that folder now if by any chance i need to restore documents or restore a folder i can go into my trash and i can find what i've deleted and i can actually right click on it and click restore which will restore that folder to where it was originally or it can delete it forever so i'm going to choose to restore it just in case i need that and now if I go back into school documents 2021, that folder is going to be there. Now, the next thing I'd like to talk about really quickly is how to create a Google Doc, a Google Slide, and a Google Sheet. So these are items that are created directly inside of Google Drive, and they make collaboration with other Google Drive users really easy and really seamless. Google Docs is going to be the equivalent of what Microsoft Word is, Google Slides is going to be the equivalent of what PowerPoint is, and Google Sheets is going to be the equivalent of what Microsoft Excel is. So if you're comfortable using any of those products, you'll find that a lot of these items are also very similar to those. And we're not really going to go into how to navigate a lot through these, but um, we will take a very, very brief look at them. Now, if I wanted to create a new Google Doc, I could click on New and click on Google Docs. And what I'll do is just click on each one of them so you can see what they look like. If I'm going to click Google Sheet. And lastly, I want to do new Google Slide. And that'll open each one of them. And so you can see this is Google Slides. This is what it looks like. It looks very similar to PowerPoint. You can then create your own presentation inside of here. Similar to Spreadsheet, this looks almost identical to what Microsoft Excel looks like. And you can do a lot of formatting and whatever you like to do with formulas inside of here. And the one that we'll look at a little bit closer is going to be Google Docs, which is going to be what Microsoft Word is. So what we want to do is show some basic features here so you can see what it looks like. I'm just going to put some text in here that is going to uh, allow us to work with this as an example. So I have my text here. I wrote the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And this is going to be our uh, test text that we're going to use here. So I can do a lot of different things with this. I can highlight it. I can bold it. I can change the color of it if I'd like. I can also make it bigger. And a lot of these things we did look at before. If I want to make it bigger or smaller, I can. Um, I can copy and paste this if I want. So if I have a few lines of text that I want to use here, I can, and I can sort of just edit it the way I would normally edit a document inside Microsoft Word. And a lot of these items are going to be very similar to what you would see. So it shouldn't be too hard for you to kind of get used to what all of the tools are. And you can see there's a lot of menus up here at the top. There's a lot of ways to format 
There's different tools that you can use. If you need to insert an image, you can insert an image from your computer or from your drive or using the photos option here. Um, you can edit your, your document as well and you can use any of these other tools here in the toolbar up here. One thing that is really important to note when you are using Google Docs is to make sure you put a title of your document. So if I click up here in Untitled Document, it's automatically going to take the first sentence of whatever I wrote. So if I want to just write, that way we know what it is and press enter, I can now find this document very easily. If you don't put a title in there, it's going to say Untitled Document. And while it doesn't seem like it's a big deal, if you have 10 untitled documents that could definitely tend to be tedious when you're trying to find out which one you want to work with. There are a few settings here that I want to quickly touch on that are going to be very useful. One of which is going to be how you can take your file from Google Docs and bring it as a Word file, let's say. So we talked about that before. Let's say you're working on a file, you've uploaded it as a Word document, that original file is not going to take any of the changes that you have made on Google Drive. So what you'll have to do is download the document with all of the changes from Drive onto your computer. And the easiest way to do that is clicking on file here at the top, pressing download and press Microsoft Word. Now, if you were working in Google Sheets and it would be a, um, a Google Sheet, you would have the option to download as a Microsoft Excel. And the same thing goes for slides. You would have the option to download as PowerPoint. So that's a really quick way for you to change, take this document and it'll download it as a Word doc and that could then be your new document. You might just want to delete the older one just so that way you, get, you don't get confused that there are two of them, but that's a really easy way to do that. One more thing I want to show you is going to be something called version history. A version history is a way for you to see as you go along what changes you've made. And if maybe you want to go back to the way it was before you made changes, you can use version history to do that. One of the cool things about Google Drive is you don't have to worry about saving your documents or items as you go through. It will save for you automatically. So maybe what I want to do if I want to look at the version history is I'm going to work with this document here and I can go ahead and um, X out of this and then go back into it. I'm going to X these two items out. Let's go back inside of our document here, the March 11th tutorial, and maybe I want to change this color to a different font color and I'll change it here again. And so we have all of our colors here. Now, if we click on file and we go into version history, see version history, we can look at what it looked like when we first started, which at this point, it just has our blank document. And we could see what our current version looks like here. And if we click on the arrow pointing downward, we can see that at 421, the document just looked like this. And then at 422, the document looked like this where we only had one color of the item. And then if we clicked on the last version, we can see that the colors have all changed. So let's say maybe I wanna go back to the way it was in the beginning where I didn't want the font big and I wanted to go back to the way it was. I can choose that version and choose restore this version. It'll say your current document will revert to this version. Click on restore and now this is going to be my new version of that document. Now let's say maybe you make the change and you instantly regret it and you'd like to go back to the one before with all of the colors. You can also do that as well. Just because you restore an older version doesn't mean those changes are deleted. So if we click on file and go to version history, see version history again, we can then click on the arrow again and see the option with all the colors that was there. So we have our current version and we have our version from here with all those colors and we can then restore this version and that will then take us back to the way that it was before. So version history is great because it allows you to make a mistake and allows you to go back and change that mistake in case you want to. This is especially helpful if you're going to be collaborating with somebody and let's say maybe you give them editing access accidentally and let's say they change the document in a way that you don't like. You can always change it back to the version that you do prefer. 
So that brings us to sharing on Google Drive. And we have our document here and it's very easy to share with someone. You have in the upper right hand corner, if you click on share, it'll come up with this box here where you choose the people that you want to share it with. So I'm going to type in the pe person that I wanna share it with. I'm gonna click on that person here and it automatically puts them in here. And as you type people in our organization, they should come up inside of here as to uh, people as people you can share it with. Now this option here is important because this is going to tell Google Drive what permissions you want to give to that person. So by default it has the editor privileges which means that person can then change that document to the way that they want it to. You also have the option to give them commenter privileges which allows them to view it and make comments but they can't make any cha actual changes to the document and view means they can't make comments or make any changes they can just see it. So I'm going to choose commenter in this case, and you can send that person a message letting them know any information. If you check notify, they'll get an email with that information. And then if you click on send, that will go ahead and send that access to that person. Now, if by any chance you need to remove access to that person, you can click share again and just go next to the person here that you need to remove access from and choose remove, and that will then remove access from that person. Right now, the other person has access to the document, and now you both can collaborate on that document as well. So now we're collaborating with our other user. You can see the user has logged in here at the top. I'm working on the same computer under two accounts, so I'm kind of going back and forth, but you can get the general idea. You can see that the comment was made. I think this font should be smaller. It was highlighted so I can see what the person is talking about. Now I can either make that change if I want to. So if I think that the font should be smaller, I can say to them, I agree. I will make the change now. Press reply. And then I can go ahead and make those changes if I want to. So if I chose to make it, let's say a 20, font it would then make it smaller and then if i was done with this um this comment i can click and resolve that comment if i want to now if i want to make a comment back to that person or i can highlight over something i can then click highlight the um item within the document choose here add comment at the top and i can say what do you think of this color press comment and then I can wait for that person to then go ahead and respond. So here we have our comment that we've made and the person wrote back, I think yellow is perfect. And so you can see how you can kind of go back and forth and collaborate on the document and collaborate on it together. So that way in the end, as the editor of this document, I can make all of those changes that I want. If I want to resolve this comment, since I have done what we wanted to do, I would click the check mark here and that would then go ahead and resolve that comment. Same thing goes here. I can always click on the comment history here in the upper right hand corner and I can reopen uh, if I decide to return to this discussion or change it, I can reopen this discussion if I want, or I can keep everything as resolved. So this is a really great way for you to go ahead and collaborate with somebody else, and you can make any changes. You still have full control of your document because you did not give that person editing privileges, but it's a great way to get other ideas from other people and collaborate that way. So this is just a really basic walkthrough of Google Drive. I hope you found this tutorial useful for getting started with Google Drive, and I hope you get started with trying to test out all the features as soon as you can.